profession deal, okay? <laughs> all right, all right, here's uh, Glenn. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just have a question. Uh, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old, I get that, just like you do. Uh, it's not expanding throughout the whole time, or is it? I just sure. Don't get it. it is. It's not okay. expanding at all. It's growing. Or growing, but uh, like is, a it, is, it expanded, is it exponential then? <laughs> it's exponential. Okay, I've tried to follow this up and see uh, if there are any measurements of the diameter of the Earth and how much it's growing today. They give it. Do, do they? What, they what, what, how much is it? Well, I don't, have, I don't remember. But, but is it, does it fit the theory? I, I don't know. <laughs> do you know? Do you have, do you want to give me the answer. About 3.6 centimeters a year. They, 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 they adjust, they, they renormalize okay. the GPS readings to, to cancel that out. Okay, so 3.6 centimeters a year. Is that what we're seeing here in the 200 million years? And is that exponential? No, no that's not exponential. Yeah, that's what I say. It's, 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 not it's more like, it's more like it's, the circumference goes to more like, I don't know exactly what it is, 23 to 24 inches a year now. That's all. Okay, we're at 20, 20, 20 what do you say, 2.3? Yeah. Yeah. Like inch. But realize, inch. That's realize the volume you're talking about. You're talking about the entire circumference of a planet. Well, I know it's a lot, but it has to do that. Increasing it by that much. That but is it, substantial. Yeah, but it still has to do that. Well, they, yeah. Just so you know, just so you know, this, is, this has nothing, hold on a second. This has nothing to do, this has nothing to do with my opinion. I just wanted to let you know. If you go to uh, Continuity Studios, Marilyn, where are we? Continuitystudios.net slash growth. Continuitystudios.net slash growth, okay? The, the geological, whatever they are, they give, they give the, they, they show this map and then they give the, the growth that you can, in a way that you can understand by, by figures, and you can go right directly to them. They give the growth. They give it. Wow. I mean, I, it's got nothing to do with me. They show the exponential growth. That's why this map has that little tiny triangle, and it goes out to all that red stuff out there, which is that last red thing is easily the square mileage of Africa in the last 10 million years. In fact, in the last 30 million years, we increased the surface area of the Earth the size of three Africas. On the other hand, 120 million years ago, maybe the size of New Zealand. That's how fast it's growing. It's not just growing it's, uh, by measure, it's growing exponentially. I had a big argument on the internet about what exponential means. It'd be bigger than it was if you put these two numbers together and then the next one has to be bigger than that. That's what they say, by the way, that's what they say about the universe. Uh, the universe is growing exponentially. Why is this such a big? Why is this such a big surprise to us? I mean, why didn't you use? There's some data also online in our database. We have a lot of the scientists working in this area, and uh, actually one of Carrie's students, who I, is a friend of mine, has data on it, on the growth, and it's, it's certainly not linear at all. It, it is it has been accelerating. Look, uh, we have a million no, no, questions. One, one more. One more. Okay, one more. This will be it because we have we have. Uh, You're ruining my fun. <laughs> Listen, Neil, we have this every year, so you can have fun every year with this. All right, one more question, no problem. Next year, this will be an accepted theory. Oh, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> okay, um, if the electron positron particle already existed in space, as a field, as a uh, say a cubicle, as an in-facing field, as a cubicle lattice. Mm -hmm. Call it an in-facing field because nobody understands it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a you know, high understand. energy photon coming in yep. and, and disrupting that cubicle lattice or in Okay, it's field. not a cubicle lattice. Hold on. Let's well, start. Let's I'm just start. If it is a cubicle. Let lattice. me say. Let me chance, and I'll, okay. I'll tell. And then you'll tell me it's wrong. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the prime matter particle, which is the particle that the universe is made out of, okay, is an in-facing field. That is. Let's just pretend that some force was put on the universe to pull it. So you had neutral, okay? It pulled the universe and it caused little bubbles to appear. Good? You got a bubble? Okay. Clear in your head. Little bubbles to appear. The outfacing area, okay, that's being pulled by the universe is the electron. Okay? Outfacing, being pulled out all the time. Got it? It's a it's a it's a non-dimensional bubble has the outside and inside, so it's not made of anything, okay? Then you have a point particle that doesn't exist at the center, and that's your positron. Yeah, I understand your theory. In I'm just saying that what I'm saying is that there's no way you can prove that 
that structure exists. Well, there's no possible a structure. Wait a exists. second. You can buy. You can buy the evidence. That's how Sherlock Holmes does it. Well, I know, but everybody's got a well possible answer to how electron positrons would fit. No, together. no, 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 no. There is kidding. another way that can fit together. What, what I'm saying is that if you discuss it with me, okay, I can show you the various pieces of evidence. For example, positrons will attract prime matter particles. Why? Because the electron is on the outside. So it will attract the electron before it will attract the positron. All right, all right. That's a theory. I'll, what I'm going to okay. propose to you is another possibility that you may not have considered. If, if there is a cubicle lattice of electron positron relationship that pervades space, and you have a high energy photon going into that lattice, it's going to, it's going to, dis, and it, it is 1.2 million electron volts, which is what it takes to break apart the electron and the positron. Okay. Yeah. What you have is a situation where the electron positron already exists in space. You have a high energy coming in and disrupting that and releasing the positron from the electron. Right. Okay. So you don't have the creation of matter. The matter was already there. Sure. Okay. So well, there is no such thing as matter to begin with, so who cares? Well, you're assuming that there's no matter because you're not assuming that the electron and positron are matter. You're well, assuming, it really has you're to already assuming some electrical field. No, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying by definition. Do you, do you think it's made out of stuff? Well, you know, this chair is made out of stuff. No, it's not. It's made out of energy and an electromagnetic uh, field. You can't prove that. You can't prove it isn't. That's no. not bad. You're saying you're, you're saying you're not. You're only dealing with facts. You're not dealing with theory. No, I'm dealing with facts. Not a fact. Show me a fact. Show me that it's made of something. Well, you show me that you're a fact. I can show you very easily by showing you pair production. Yeah, it's a vicious circle, you see. No, it's not. If the electron and positron already exist in space, you're not creating the electron and positron. No, right? electron and positron are a field. They're not electrons. Well, so you're, 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 you're again assuming something you haven't proven yet. Okay? I'll, I'll let you go from there. Thank you. Listen, this is great discussion. I do want to thank Neil for coming down. Everybody give him a round of applause. I tell you, it's... Uh, I don't know, Neil. I would say that you fit in here quite well. That you can... <laughs> now, I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, I do want to welcome you to to our group and thank you so much. Pleasure. And uh, I think you've got camaraderie here because we talk about this stuff all the time. So your your stuff. We're very, very used to it, but I really want to thank you for coming down. Uh, I also want everyone to uh, uh, realize that Neil has probably done more than anybody, uh, whether you agree with prime matter, matter particles or not, than anyone to put this out into the public. I don't know how many millions of views have did, have that one video had. The but one I made the guy take down, the one million seven hundred yeah. thousand. Yeah. So it's the it's new one is a couple hundred. Yeah, but some, some, you know, at least two or two million or more has seen this video, and that's how I got into this. I saw this video and it really got me uh, interested. So that alone is is worth uh, uh, having him here as a person in this area. And then we have a lot of information on the internet, but you're free to talk with him. But right now, I want everybody to go outside. We're going to do our group picture outside of the pyramid on the steps. This is what we do traditionally. So go everybody outside. If you have a camera, yes, we can take a picture. We, will, we have a professional photographer here that will send you the picture. So don't hand me your cell phone in three dimensions to have me take your picture. Okay, everybody out into the uh, uh, steps there. We're in a video and to